This is Dave Fleming, broadcaster with the Giants, and you're listening to Jim on Base. Welcome back to another episode of the Jim on Base Show. We're here in San Francisco with Dave Fleming. And Dave, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming on. You're welcome. Nice to see you. And is it true? I heard a rumor that your handicap is three on the golf course. Is that true? Or? <laughs> it's up to four. I've been playing some bad golf lately, but yeah, you heard that right. I imagine you've had some good matches with Giants-related people. Uh, ran to Posey and Pebble Beach. Contos, I know, is good. Uh, Affelt said he's kind of getting better in retirement, so have you had some good matches out there? I've played with uh, all those guys. I don't, I don't think I've played with Affelt. Javi Lopez and I are golf partners on the road when he travels with the Giants. There's some current Giants players that I play with, mostly in the offseason if they're around. Webb or Yastrzemski, Kurt Casale used to be a, a golf buddy when he was uh, wearing a Giants uniform, so I miss having Kurt around. Uh, the, the one who's working on it, I mean, Affelt says he is, Romo's really working at it. And I told Romo when I saw him in spring training, because he wanted to tell me all about golf, and I said, look, I'm not playing with you until you you can't be that bad. I'm not playing with you. And I think he kind of, I was kind of teasing him, but I think he really took it seriously. So now every time he sees me, he's giving me reports on his scores. I'm like, I'm just letting him go, but I, I sort of feel a little guilty about it because I think he really thinks I was like being harsh and judgmental and I'm never playing with you until you clean it up. Do you have a favorite course or any dream spots that you haven't gone to yet? Uh, well, I've played a lot of great golf courses. So, um, you know, there's still some over in the UK where I love to go and travel. There's still some that I haven't been to that I want to play. I mean, it's hard to beat one that's down the road. Cypress Point is pretty beautiful. If I had one course to play for one day, that might be it. And you got to have that balance of you got to do good and also be able to savor being in a nice place, right? You don't want to golf terribly and ruin the moment, right? That's true. My opinion of places does get colored by if I play well or not. You know, if I play really well, oh, I love that course. Uh, but I'm pretty good at, you know, some of these guys are so competitive. It's really hard for them to enjoy a place if they're not playing well. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I like to compete and have a little bet and have fun, but I'm out there to play and be outside and walk around and be with my friends like those are the main things for for golf for me and uh so I, I whether i play well or not usually i can get over that good to have a short memory you know really good and you have some kids right you have three kids total I have three kids yeah my oldest two are going to be seniors in high school my youngest is a eighth grader so i'm we're we're, we're moving along and the older ones they're twins right twins do they root on the rogers brothers then or they've been introduced or I, you know, they haven't met them, although I should make that happen. The Rogers brothers always ask me about my... I talk with Tyler and Taylor a lot about their relationship and my twins' relationship and how they're... Because my twins are identical, just like they are. So there's even more of a uh, sort of a kinship there. So I need to make that happen. My, my two would love getting to meet them. They follow them closely. They root for them. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing. Well, I have some friends that are twins, and one's seven minutes older. So which one's secondly older of your two? Well, well, one is like 40 seconds older than the other. So it's a really short window. I do. I, I feel pressure with our twins, Rog, the Rogers on this Giants team. It was freaking me out the first month of the year because as I was trying to get to know Taylor, I was like, of all people here, I cannot get this wrong. I'm the father of twins. I can't screw this up. But I was, you know, the first few weeks, I just was, I was having a hard time with it, and it was bugging me. So now that I'm totally comfortable with each of them, I'm feeling better. So it's got to be great seeing them kind of grow up. Like, are they into sports, or what, what are their personalities like? Yeah, all my kids are into sports. They're spoiled. Um, you know, they all play sports, and they like coming to games, but coming to games for them maybe doesn't feel quite as special it does for other kids. So whenever I offer, like, hey, you all want to come to a game? Sometimes it's like, yeah, sure, yeah. You know, it's a little different. Uh, so I'd like to get them a to be a bit more appreciative of, of kind of the opportunity they have to come here and sometimes we'll give them an empty booth and they can watch uh, the game from a booth and they bring their friends and they're going out to the Ghirardelli stand and the guy recognizes them, here, have some Sunday. You know, like, they get treated pretty well around here. It's not quite a normal uh, childhood baseball experience. Uh, I think they do appreciate it, but maybe not quite as much as they should. Well, speaking of appreciating things, it's got to be surreal for you, because isn't it true you grew up in uh, Virginia listening to John Miller, and now you're friends and colleagues with him? It is true. Uh, I can remember some of my earliest baseball memories. We had a, one of those old-timey station wagons where the back seat faced backwards, 
you may be too young to remember those, but like the, the old Chevy station wagons where the back gate would sort of swing open and the back bench seat was facing backwards. And uh, I can remember being in the back seat of the station wagon, driving home from going to an Orioles game in person, and you'd put on the radio broadcast on the way home because John was doing the highlights just like he does now. Uh, so, you know, truly from the time I was a, John may not want to hear that, but from the time I was a little kid, I was listening to John. And, you know, I mean, am I over it by now? Sure. Now John's just been my partner for 21 years. But when I first started here, that was, uh, it was an interesting feeling. Well, I had him on the show, and he told me how growing up he played Stratomatic and would kind of narrate it like an announcer. So did you and your brother, who's also a broadcaster, did you guys do that growing up with anything? Or You know, we didn't. I, weirdly, we did not. I mean, I think both of us got into this going to college and having a chance to do some of this just as a pure hobby in college. I do remember uh, my grandfather w lived in Missouri, and so I would go visit him in the summertime during baseball season. Cardinals were really good. Ozzie Smith, Willie McGee, like a super fun uh, team, especially for a kid. Ozzie's doing his backflip. So we would watch Cardinals games, and I have a tape somewhere of my grandfather put a tape recorder down on the coffee table, and we watched the game, and he and I talked about the game and so my voice at age like nine and his voice are on there not exactly broadcasting the game but something kind of similar that's probably the closest i got is your voice still the same or <laughs> well, my voice is a little less squeaky well you've done so many events in, in the sports world so is there any ones that are maybe a bucket list and also what do you like to do away from the game when you're not broadcasting well i mean uh, my bucket list broadcasts um you know, I've been pretty lucky. I've done the World Series. I've done the Rose Bowl. I've done the Masters. Um, those are pretty cool things. Um, you know, I'm sure there are others that I would love to do, but it's not like I'm just dying to do the Super Bowl. Like, uh, you know, for, for would I like to do a college football national championship game? I think I would. That would be a cool thing to do. I've never done that. Um, if they asked me to do the Super Bowl, I'd do it. But, um, you know, my baseball world keeps me really fulfilled. And so the fact that I've had experiences with the Giants in the World Series last year for MLB in the World Series without the Giants involved was really fun to be there in a different capacity. Uh, that keeps me pretty happy. Well, Dave, it's great to have you on. I know you just interviewed Gabe Kapler. you got to get up to the booth and kind of get in your routine. So thanks for stopping by and uh, good to see you. It's a working day, but I'm happy to chat with you.